Hallelujah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Happy Easter and a very warm welcome to St. James's Piccadilly on this, the second Sunday of Easter. We meet in the light of Easter following our celebration of Jesus' resurrection last week. And knowing that ours is a living hope, we wait for our world to be transformed. We extend an especially warm welcome this morning to members of the PCC at St Pancras, the congregation and staff who are all joining us this morning. The church warden at St Pancras, Dorothea, will be reading the gospel for us this morning. Welcome to this table of love where you are known and where God in the Holy Trinity waits and calls you by name. Welcome to you all, whether you're joining us in the building or online. As we gather from near and far, let's take a moment to greet one another. For those joining us online, please use the chat function on YouTube to tell us where you are worshipping from today. We now take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds to worship God and to bring all before our Creator and the throne of grace. Eternal God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The risen Christ appeared to the disciples behind the doors they had locked out of fear. Let us make our confession to God, acknowledging all that separates us from Christ, risen from the dead today. Ever-loving God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God who is both power and love forgive you and free you from your sin, give you healing and strength, and raise you to new life in Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Risen Christ, for whom no door is locked, no entrance barred, open the doors of our hearts that we may seek the good of others and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace. To the praise of God. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now, the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and a great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses, sold them and brought the proceeds of what they sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as, ha as any had need. Listen for what the Spirit is saying. Thanks, Thanks be to God. If you are able, please stand to sing the song. Mercy and truth are met together. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, Lord. O Lord. <clears throat> when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, 
Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Back in 1970, a book was published by the American futurists Alvin Toffler and Adelaide Farrell called Future Shock. They identified distress and disorientation caused by what they described as the premature arrival of the future. When too much is changing too fast, when the future is prematurely here before we feel ready for it. This is what's happening, they said, in post-industrial societies, especially relating to the speed of the development of technology. When a society suffers from future shock, they said, there are other features that start to emerge too. Politics becomes about nostalgia and veers towards populism. The dislocation of populations in patterns of forced migration mean that attitudes harden towards anyone who is perceived to be different. And they popularize the term now used frequently in the 2020s, information overload. Despite being written in 1970, this analysis of post-industrial societies such as the UK is extraordinarily contemporary. I read this classic last year and I'm revisiting it because it's Easter. The Easter Gospels, as the one we heard today, are full of people displaying what you might call future shock. In these first days, what, the, what do the disciples want to do? They want to go back to the past. They either return to work, shut themselves away, or take a long walk home. Wherever you look in the gospel, in the stories of these first few days and weeks, there is distress, disorientation, arguments, and confusion, mixed, yes, with excitement, relief, and disbelief. The future has arrived suddenly, and for the past three years, Jesus had been talking about it, what he constantly referred to as the kingdom of God. They just hadn't been paying attention. Now it's here. Over time, of course, they changed too, from isolated, fearful individuals into hopeful, still fractious, but courageous communities. But for now, they're just not sure what's happening. The challenge for people of faith to say anything comprehensible about Christ raised from the dead in a modern context is immense. And today, Thomas is one of our guides. Who is Thomas? There are quite a few clues in the gospel as to his personality. I've always had a soft spot for Thomas because I was ordained on his feast day, the 3rd of July, doubting Thomas. Perhaps that explains a lot. We can see some of what Thomas is like from the gospels. Previously, he'd worried that he didn't know where Jesus was going when Jesus began to get all mysterious and said he was dis disappearing, but that he knew that they knew the way because they'd been with him. Thomas interrupts him. I don't know the way, he says. How can we know the way? He also becomes fervent at one point when Jesus was going to go to Bethany, but because of the deteriorating situation, the group were worried that Jesus would be stoned to death. Thomas says, let's all go, we'll all die with him. And now, perhaps he's being a bit belligerent, understandably so. I'm not going to believe this story unless I put my hands in his wounds. I want proof. 
All of these thoroughly human impulses are surely recognizable to us from, I really get this, I'm going to throw myself into this faith, to, I have no idea how to live this. It's opaque, I'm confused, and anyway, the church is such a flawed institution, I can't see a future in it. To, it's all mumbo jumbo, I've been kidding myself, my rational head has won, I want proof. All of these reactions are perfectly human and normal, and we find them all in Thomas. The word disciple just means one who's learning, constantly learning. Thomas learns by doing and adapting, and so is a model of discipleship for our time. He offers to throw himself into it. He worries when he doesn't have a clear path. And here, he's demanding not just to see Jesus, but to put his hands in the wounds. He and the others could be said to be suffering from something like future shock. Future shock is also perhaps helpful when we're considering our society post-pandemic, the immense changes that have been accelerated, the inequalities that have been exposed, and the insistence by climate scientists and epidemiologists that it will, it will happen again. And some of the future shock in 2024 is to say that the climate emergency is not something that is about to happen, it has happened. What is the church's vocation in this time, the time of the sixth mass extinction? And in the light of a future shock response that might be characterized, we recognize these responses too. Climate change isn't real. If it is real, it isn't us. If it is us, it's not that bad. If it is that bad, it's too late to do anything about it. In the light of this gospel of Thomas, our spiritual task in a situation of future shock is surely to remain questioning, to remain challenging to human institutions and systems, including challenging ourselves as church. At the same time, at the same time, being ready to fall to our knees as Thomas did in the presence of the risen Christ. To be comfortable with questioning and challenge, but never to let this fall into cynicism. To know in our hearts that doubt is an important and vital strand of spirituality. It's an old adage, but it's one that's worth repeating, that the opposite of faith isn't doubt. The opposite of faith is certainty. And so we as a church are shaped by our faith and without being reckless, refuse to be risk averse. Yesterday, I signed a letter from priests from different denominations to our MP here at St. James's and the MP for St. Pancras, the conservative Nikki Aiken for St. James's and the Labour Keir Starmer for St. Pancras raising concerns about the rise in the numbers of people who are experiencing homelessness and are sleeping on the streets, and the proposed criminal justice bill before Parliament, which has a number of ill-defined phrases, such as public nuisance, for which the penalty can be a fine of £2,500, utterly unpayable by someone sleeping rough, which will then inevitably result in a month in prison. And a series of meetings have been held with the MP for Westminster precisely on this issue, which I've attended on your behalf through the broad-based community organizing group, London Citizens. The priorities of citizens for the elections for London's mayor, for which this church is a polling station on the 2nd of May, are also migration and refugees, work and wages, climate emergency and housing. A group from St. James's will attend the assembly on the 25th of April. If you'd like to be part of that advocacy with citizens, please talk to our church wardens, especially Claire Wright, or talk to me. And on Earth Day, on the 22nd of April, a prayer walk will be starting from St. James's with Christian Climate Action, highlighting the existence and practices of mining companies in St. James's Square whose lead mining in Madagascar and lithium mining in Serbia has caused for years poverty and suffering to local people. 
the London Mining Network has good education on this. The prayer walk will also include a visit to the 12th largest aerospace manufacturer in the world, less than a minute from here, supplying military helicopters to the UK and other governments, including Italy, Saudi Arabia, Israel, Norway. Corporate Watch has good education and information on this. And from St Pancras Euston Road, around 50% of Camden's food bank need is delivered, led by their church warden, now from bigger premises because for appalling reasons the need is growing. And like St James's on a Sunday, hot food is offered to people going through homelessness in St Pancras's churchyard. And at two services I took recently, one at St James's and one at St Pancras, our Eucharists were interrupted by two different people from each community whose despair and anger was plain. Both our church buildings can feel like field hospitals sometimes, and so they should for people in immediate need. A man died just recently on the street not far from this church building. But the center of our life, whatever else we do, however else we speak, the center of our life is that we gather for prayer and we pray from within creation and from within the eternal life that we proclaim at Easter. This gives us our eternal perspective, our vision and our hope and our energy to take action as a result. Are you a prayer, a singer, a poet, an educator, a protester? Faith without works is dead as we read in the letter of James. The invitation at Easter is to live out the resurrection, which is at this table, a table where all are invited and all are fed, all are called and named. But also, after the example of Thomas, this gathering at this table is where you can bring your doubt, your ambivalence, your fear, your despair that things aren't changing fast enough or your distress that changes are overwhelming. Like Peter, remember the story on the beach over breakfast, an encounter with the risen Christ can mean it's possible that you will be reminded of the worst thing that you ever did. And that in being reminded of this, as Peter was reminded three times, you're held in love and given the energy to change. These resurrection days are full of heady stories and emotional future shock. And so this altar too is a place to bring your shame, your hopelessness and grief, your very real fear that this just isn't going to end well. But at this altar, despair is not an option. And just as the first apostles, there's room for great difference between us. There is room at this altar for contemplatives, for activists, politicians, teachers, for people going through homelessness, for business leaders, for bankers and agriculturalists, for writers, scientists, musicians and lawyers, for students, for retirees, for children, for everyone online for all those people who are not sure why they live how they live or how they might go on, without exception. And that is hard to accept in such fractious and combative times, but without exception, every person has a place at this table. Much has changed for St. James's and St. Pancras over the pandemic, and in wider Church of England contexts and meetings, I can detect the presence of future shock in myself and in others. After this service, the congregation is invited to an update from our church council regarding the strategy and business plans of St. James's Church. For some, it may be not clear that a church should even have either a business plan or a strategy but for both St. Pancras and St. James's, with the proper accountabilities that come with keeping our grade one listed buildings open 
seven days a week for the public to whom they belong anyway, the proper accountabilities that come with being registered charities to the Charity Commission, the accountability for the safety of visitors, the payment of tax, the essential safeguarding arrangements for everyone who's part of our communities, the tools of strategy and business planning are essential for transparent and good governance. And so we'll be going through a strategy and planning process with St Pancras too shortly. The challenge is to make these practicalities an expression of our values, to make the values real as far as it lies with us. For St. James's, these values are contemplation, action, adventure, courage, and kindness. At the same time, our vital vocation and task is that we never forget that we are church, which just means assembly. The exciting prospect of being church in modern society, of being church in this city. A resurrection people, resolutely hopeful and energetic in prayer, contemplation and action, determined to help shape a better world and a fairer one. Someone wrote me an email this week which helped put some parameters for me around the fundamental and existential future shock challenges our society faces and how the church might find its vocation in the midst of it. She wrote this. Christianity is marginalized in the public square partly because its moral authority has been eroded by abuse scandals in the churches partly because of the medicalization of human distress, which undermines its pastoral contribution, but mainly because it offers so little in the way of metaphysical substance and ends up being perceived as only a system of personal piety. It's a dense analysis, but one that bears reflection. Because the season of Easter will not allow the church to retreat from the public square into just a system of personal piety, as my emailer wrote. This is such a great challenge and an invigorating one. Because we say at Easter that resurrection is what there is on the other side of nothing. It's the revelation that we are in the midst of all the change, living in the ocean of eternity as well as the pressure of time. Eternal life is now within the creation that God has made and with the human beings God has given you to love, many of whom are gathered here in this church at this altar on this day. Let us love one another. And in the spirit of Thomas, let us listen together for the voice of Christ, who will always repeat with wounded hands outstretched to you, peace be with you. And in so far as it lies with us, let us be peace builders and peacekeepers rooted in Christ's just and revolutionary peace. This rootedness in the eternal presence of God, present in every tiny atom, cell, creature, plant, and person, can help St. James's and St. Pancras become for our communities perhaps what you might call future shock absorbers. This will only happen with a commitment to trust, trusting God deeply, and if we pledge to keep adapting together, committed to faithful change, founded in our identity as church, rooted in God's earth, shot through as it is with eternity. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.
we stand to affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. Let us pray for the world, for the church, for all in need, and for those who've asked for our prayers. Let us pray. The bidding prayer for this morning is, Lord, hear us. And the response is, Lord, graciously hear us. Gracious God, as we move on from the journey of Easter, help us to come together as a united community, remembering, celebrating, and reflecting the reality of the risen, resurrected Jesus. May the Easter story bring us belief, unity, strength, excitement, and generosity as a Christian community. Help us to be hopeful and grateful for what is good and for what comes from our God, and to hold the promises of Jesus in our hearts and minds, and to reach out to each other and to the world, and to embrace the future. Meet us in our doubts and our wobbles, and help us to meet each other. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for this world which you have created, for this country and its different communities and diversity, and for all in authority. Guide all those who have to lead and make decisions and take responsibility for direction and for the many challenges and conflicting needs. Give them and us wisdom, strength, clarity and compassion, and the determination to look beyond the immediate and into the future. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the whole community of St. James, including our online community, and for our relationship with St. Pancras Euston Road, whose members we welcome today. We lift all the work and different events happening this coming months for the groups at St. James, for the international community, for those experiencing homelessness, and for those who are new to St. James. We pray for the ministry team, the staff, the volunteers who worked so hard to plan, host, and make things happen, and to create a welcoming and loving environment and vision for our church. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We continue to lift to you the many parts of the world which are experiencing such deep turmoil, violence and war. We pray for all those places that are constantly on our screens and in our minds and hearts, such as Gaza, the Middle East in general, Ukraine, where the war and suffering goes on, and also those places where there, where there is war but less awareness such as Syria, Sudan, Myanmar, and other places where there is deep insecurity and threat. We continue to pray that those desperate for food, medicine, shelter, and places of safety can still find help in the aftermath of the shocking death of the aid workers in Gaza, that the voices of peace will be heard more strongly. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those in this country, in this city, 
who are facing challenging and difficult times, looking for safe accommodation, steady work, and able to have their physical and emotional needs addressed. We pray for people we don't know and those known to us who are struggling in all kinds of ways at this time, through illness, hardship, loneliness, and personal struggles. Comfort them with your loving presence and spirit and help us to know best how to help them. And we pray especially for members of this congregation, for those who have asked for our prayers, for Claire, for those who are ill, Amy and Leo, Joe, Sarah, David, Taney, Annie, Margaret, Puck, Imogen, Robert, Fiona, and for many others known to us. And for recently departed, for Barry, who has recently died, and for all those who mourn him. After the peace, we will be taking a collection. We know that Christ is alive, and so we need to keep the doors of this church open to spread the light and love of this place and of Christ's message. Please do give whatever you are able. There are gift aid envelopes in the pews. You can also give through tapping when the collection plate comes round or through the QR code, which can be found at the back of the orders of service. Thank you so much for those who give already, for those who are about to give, and those who are giving online. We stand for the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you.
risen Christ Jesus, in this bread soon to be broken and this wine soon to be poured out, may we know you as the fire that burns within us, that we may bring light to your world. Amen. It is the tradition here at St. James's that we gather around this altar. We will be many circles. Please do not be afraid to stand behind me here. Everyone is welcome to this table of love. If you do need a seat, there is one here at the front. And as we gather, we sing. Halle, halle, halle. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal creator. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in us the image of your glory. He has placed us once more in paradise and opened to us the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, Earth and heaven resound with gladness, with, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory.
God, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. so calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of the Blessed Mary, James, Thomas, Pancras, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, eternal God, forever and ever. Let us pray in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. We forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ.
draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shared for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Everyone is welcome to receive communion. You may receive the bread and the wine, the bread or the wine. There are gluten-free wafers also available. If you wish to receive a blessing, please put your arm in this way so we know that that is what you'd wish for. And once you've received communion, you're welcome to return to your seats.
from singing, oh how can I keep from singing? 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 How can I keep from singing?
Together we pray. God of life and love, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ as we have received these gifts of your creation. May we go out with joy and gratitude to live as witnesses to your hope and justice for the whole earth. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning and choosing to be with us instead of running the London Marathon. It is wonderful to see you all. I just have a couple of notices before we have more notices from the congregation. Sunday Forum follows online after the service, and this is a space for our online community to gather and to check in with one another. So do pop along to say hello and join in that fellowship. Details of the meeting can be found in the weekly newsletter, which is also on our website. Please do also stay for tea, coffee, and cake to meet the members of our partner church, St. Pancras. It's wonderful to have you with us this morning. And it is over there, I'm be, I've been told. The tea and coffee is that way. Um, and a big thank you to our volunteers um, who make this hospitality possible. Hello, um, I'm Harry. I'm one of the singers here at St. James's. Um, I'd like to draw your attention to a concert here tonight at 7 p.m. given by singers and musicians from the St. James's community. The music takes us from Palm Sunday through Holy Week onto Easter and looking forward to Ascension and Pentecost. Um, it's including some amazing works, um, Vaughan Williams's Five Mystical Songs um, and Leighton's Easter Sequence. All the proceeds go to support our summer tour to Yorkshire this August. Um, if you cannot come and wish to donate to our tour anyway, you can come and find me and I will make sure that you give me your money. Um, <laughs> tickets for this evening are via the SJP website and also are available on the door. We'd love to see you there. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Keith. I'm the Parochial Church Council Secretary for St. James's. And I wonder... If I was to ask all of you, what is the most important thing you've forgotten to do today? I wonder how many would answer, it is not to, have gone to put my name down on the electoral roll. Because you have now only three weeks in which to do so. We have our annual parochial church meeting here on the 12th of May. It's an exciting event where everybody is welcome, but it is only those who have actually registered on the electoral roll who can vote. And I can tell you, there is going to be an election. We have got some vacancies. So it's very important that you do so. So please do. You will see on page 27 of the service sheet how to do it. There should be uh, sheets at the back, but in any event, you can download them online in the way it's set out in the service sheet. So. Thank you very much. We look forward to all of you registering on the electoral roll. Hello, I'm Deborah. I'm just here to reassure you that you are not alone in becoming future shock absorbers. If you, um, there's lots of nourishment available. If you have a look at page 22 and 23 in your service sheet, you'll see that we have poetry. What's the good of poetry? We think a lot. Diane will be here on the 17th. Um, with Canon Mark Oakley, who's Dean of um, Southwark Cathedral these days. Please do come along to that event. Also, the next two uh, events in our Changing Our Minds series are coming up later in the month as well, where we're speaking to indigenous people and to um, philosophers of religion, all sorts. So have a look at that one. Um, if you are interested in the Earth Day 22nd of April walk, prayer walk, that leaves at 12 from outside the Piccadilly gates. You can speak to me or to Petra about that. Please do come along. Um, and finally, next week, our next iteration of the Ecozoic Garden, our garden for the future, uh, we're going to be planting seeds. This is in collaboration with the International Group. We're having a millet garden this year. We think millet is going to be important for a hotter, drier future. So if you'd like to get involved in some seed planting, that's after the service next week. Thank you.
Hello, I'm Dee, one of your church wardens, part of the wardening team. Uh, just to remind you that next week, if you are new or have not been to a newcomer's lunch, uh, there is a newcomer's lunch uh, next uh, Sunday. Um, you can still sign up on Church Suite or come and there's a, or you can come and speak to one of the wardens or you can sign up um, online at um, sort of just email the church wardens. Uh, all are welcome and it's, it will be in Lucy's flat. If you don't know where Lucy's flat is, we will, will, will be, some of us will be at the back next week and you can, uh, we can all go up together. So looking forward to meeting you. There's also just another, another notice. Um, as part of um, uh, refugees, if people are asylum seekers, they are often put into home office accommodation. And what's happening at the moment is people have, um, were initially given seven days uh, to find alternative accommodation if they became a refugee, uh, which isn't enough time, so people were coming onto the street. It's been extended again to a month, but that still doesn't give a great deal of time, and people are coming onto the streets that have been in home office accommodation that were refugee, that are now refugees. So the, um, the London Diocese works in partnership with Housing Justice, and they have uh, set up uh, something about, have you got a spare room for at least six months? and they give support and you can get it's some tax-free money for, for um, uh, renting out your room. But the support is from Housing Justice for you as a, a, a landlord and also for the, the refugee that's coming. If you want to know more about that, please come and see me and I'm hoping that we're going to get some, we'll have a leaflet up on the um, notice board. Thank you. Hi, yeah, I'm Dan. It's less of a notice, it's more of a thank you. I've been a um, member of these congregations for quite a few years, but you may not have seen me in the past two years, I think it's been, uh, just because I'm training for ordination uh, at Westcott House in Cambridge, and that's why you haven't seen me. But I know that there is plenty of you praying for me and thinking about me, and I just wanted to say a massive thank you for all of your prayers and support, and also assure you uh, that you are being prayed for daily at Westcott House Chapel in Cambridge. So thank you very much. We've mentioned that there are members of St Pancras here today. Could you just give us a wave, or anyone who's from St Pancras? How fantastic to have you with us. It's wonderful. And as we said, there's tea and coffee and, uh, and there's some cake over to your right at the front of the church there. This afternoon, Soul at St. James is in the Courtyard, which is our monthly outdoor uh, soul music, gospel music festival. It's a really joyous hour, so please do join that uh, from 2 um, and then at 3. So uh, that's a fantastic um, event that's just being set up out there. Um, and just finally, there are two people, I think, at least two people whose birthday is actually today. So we're going to sing to them. One of them is Elijah and... We can see Elijah is not actually in the building. He's just out there setting up soul at St. James. So we're going to sing really loudly out there so that he can hear it. And the other is Yeti in the front here. So we're going to sing happy birthday to Yeti and Elijah, maestro. Happy birthday to We stand to sing our final
God the Creator, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you the gates of everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has overcome the forces of death and hell, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Christ, empower you and fill you with peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this Easter and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.